come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, they, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Eric Wilson. Today, we are going to be discussing Alexi Lafreniere and the kind of underwhelming start to the season that he's had. I think that the New York Rangers need more out of Alexi Lafreniere to get back to playing some serious winning hockey. And Eric, I think you agree here. So let's go ahead and dive into Alexi Lafreniere, what we want to see from him and all that stuff. But before we do that, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's been a couple of days since we've seen the Rangers play, but we're coming up on our West Coast road trip, which is always uh, one of my favorite parts of the season, uh, just to go up against all those California teams in Seattle. So it should be a good weekend coming up for us. Absolutely. But in order for the Rangers to keep winning these games and, you know, coming out on top, we need more from certain players, one of them being Alexi Lafreniere. Right now, the Rangers sit fourth in the Metropolitan Division. Not exactly where we want to be. We want to be in first, but not the worst record nonetheless. Uh, but right now, I do want to discuss Alexi Lafreniere. Take a look at him. Uh, discuss some of the lines that he's been playing on. Now, I know he's a player who's had his lines change quite a few times. It was on, I think, the first at one point, second. Now, I think the third is what we're rolling with. The kid line, again, on that third line. And I feel like the other kids have really been performing. Kaka's been pretty solid this year. hedel has been really good for the Rangers this season. But Alexi Lafreniere, kind of the guy that we had the most hopes for going into this year out of those kids, has taken a step back and hasn't been as great as he's been in the past. So, Eric, what are your initial thoughts on Alexi Lafreniere? And how does his play compare to the rest of the kids on that line? I definitely think he's underperformed the most out of um, everyone on the kid line. The best so far has definitely been Philip Hedel. You know, he's only played in 11 games this season, but he still has eight points in that. You know, he had that little injury um, that he took like a week or two off from. But Philip Hedel has truly broken out this season like we've been expecting him to. And he's been pretty much the best one on that line. Now, you look at Capo Caco, who has pretty similar stats to Lafreniere, but I still think that he has been playing a lot better than Lafreniere. Just outside of point scoring, he's made a lot of great passes, set up a lot of great plays, and looks really confident with the puck. Then on the other hand, Alexi Lafreniere, who also only has seven points in 17 games, he kind of hasn't done too much. You know, when he's putting up points, he's putting up points. But other than that, it's kind of like he's just really not doing anything. Not really hurting the team at this very second, but not helping that much either. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the, the thing to, to key in on here is the fact that he's not doing anything extra. He's not helping extra, right? You kind of just mentioned that right there, saying that he's not hurting the team necessarily, but he's also not helping them win. He's not putting up points the way that we expected him to. And this is a player who we thought early on uh, in the season, really entering the season throughout the off season, he was going to be on the first line. And it was Capo Caco who ended up taking that position from him and played pretty well there before, of course, we made some line changes, moving them all back down to the third line to reignite that kid line energy. But again, just kind of talking about, you know, we had really high hopes for him. Eric, what are your thoughts on him just failing to achieve those expectations that were set out for him this season? Uh, it's frustrating. You know, he's been a frustrating player all throughout his career so far. And, you know, we drafted him first overall back a couple of years ago, and we've just been waiting and waiting for him to finally break out. And we thought it was going to be this season. And, you know, he did start on the first line, didn't really work out too well. He was probably the least consistent player on that line. Then got switched around with Kako. Kako played great up on the first line until – the entire team kind of started to collapse. So now it's just, they're all on the third line again, the kid line. So, yeah, it's it's disappointing. It's frustrating. And we know that Lafreniere is a good player. He's a very smart hockey player, and he has a lot of talent to him. It, I don't know what it is that's just causing it to not work out so far. Yeah, and I mean, if you could try and pinpoint it, though, what do you think that is? What is preventing Alexi Lafreniere from reaching that next level in his game? Honestly, I just – I think it's just a lack of chemistry. You know, he's been down on the third line for most of his career so far. And then we finally give him the chance to play in the top six. And he's playing with guys like Chris Kreider and Mika Zibanejad, who are like best friends, have been playing together on that same line for like five years. And then you just throw like a 21-year-old kid there and we expect him to perform. You know, he's feeling a lot of pressure being drafted first overall. You're expected to come into the league and instantly be a star. And he hasn't been a bad player, but he has definitely not been a star. He's just been like an average NHL players so far. Yeah, and I, I wonder, though, with Jimmy VC playing up on that first line alongside Kreider and Zibanejad, which is surprising to say the least, you know, seeing VC mm -hmm. all the way up on that first line, it, is it a matter of time before Lexi Lafreniere gets called upon to be put into that top six, get that top six 
ice time, see if that can maybe ignite him? Or do you think that at this rate, it's got to go to Capococco ahead of him? I mean, at this point, I would say that Kako is a better choice to be moved up. I don't think Jimmy Vesey's time on the first line is going to be that long. He's, Jimmy Vesey is a good player, but yeah, I don't think he's first line worthy whatsoever. So when it does come time to switch things up again, I definitely see someone like Kako being called up, unless someone like Panarin moves up as well. Yeah, and I'll say this. I think that, you know, Alexi Lafreniere has been decent defensively as a forward, but it's really the offense that is his struggle so far this season, you know, really making plays uh, on the offensive end and, you know, putting the puck in the back of the net, creating plays, playmaking, just in general, offense has kind of been his slow point, you know, uh, but defensively, how do you feel that he's been so far this season as a defensive forward? And do you, would you say that's the strong suit of his game so far? I wouldn't necessarily say it's a strong suit. I definitely think that he is a good defensive forward. He is very good on the forecheck and the back check, but it's, he doesn't, he's like, you look at all these great defensive forwards in the NHL, people like Patrice Bergeron and other guys like that, and that's where they really excel. Lafreniere is good at it, but it's nothing too crazy. It's really just like the offense that he contributes right now, and he does it very averagely. You know, nothing too crazy going on with him right now. Yeah, well, I think that we can agree he's been underwhelming offensively so what do you think he has to do to kind of fix that start becoming more of a playmaker and really start to make a difference on the offensive end I think he just needs to be smarter with the puck play it more safe you know you gotta just go into the game with a calm head like ignore the pressure ignore all the people like us telling him that he needs to do better you know he just needs to play his game like we know he can we've seen him play he was great in the minors before he was drafted he plays great um, during the playoffs last season when things were just working for the kid line. And I think he just needs to take a little breath and reset. You know, he's feeling a lot of pressure from management, from the fans, from us. <laughs> but he, we know that he has what it takes to do good. We've watched him all throughout last playoffs. He was dominant. He was, like, outside of Philip Hedl, like, one of the best forwards that we had throughout all of last year's playoff run. And he's taken a little bit of a step back. And I don't think it's anything we need to worry too much about because we've seen what he can do, and we know that he's just one step away from just getting back to where he should be. Yeah, I mean, he's on pace for only 34 points a season. Again, lackluster numbers, not doing enough offensively, not creating as many points or opportunities as we had expected him to. But I do think Lafreniere has been aggressive. I think that, you know, he's playing with some decent composure, but the, the opportunities maybe just aren't there, and he's not opening them up for himself just yet. But I, I, I'm not ready to give up on him, you know, drop him mm -hmm. all the way down to the fourth line or anything drastic like that. I think that, you know, just give it a little bit more time and give him some more opportunities on that kid line. And I think he's got an opportunity to eventually break out on that kid line. Yeah, and if it does come to look like we're at a point where we're going to make a really strong playoff run this year and Lafreniere is still underperforming, could always be looked at as a trade piece as well later on yeah. down the line. Yeah, I, I think that's actually a great point. I've seen some uh, some tweets actually mentioning Lafreniere as a potential trade candidate for the Rangers as we get closer to the deadline. Him, Ryan Reeves, and maybe a couple other players could potentially be on their way out. But again, I don't think that's necessarily the conversation to be had right now. Lafreniere mm -hmm. uh, may be underperforming, playing underwhelmingly, but I, I think it's a little too soon to say it's time to ship him out. Uh, again, I think that keeping the kid line intact for now is probably the best way to get that breakout out of Alexi Lafreniere. The chemistry that he, Heedle, and Kako have together is, you know, it's proven, proven the work, proven to be a difference-making uh, line right there. So if I were Gerard Galland, if I'm looking at Alexi Lafreniere saying, I need more out of this guy, I'm keeping that kid line intact, keeping him with some solid uh, ice time on that kid line, and hoping that that's what propels him to have that breakout. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. If it's if it's not broken, don't fix it. And it worked last season a lot. So I agree, I fully agree with you right there that keeping the kid line intact and getting them a deserving amount of ice time without taking away from the top six too much is definitely the best solution to this problem. I agree. And I think that really just, you know, shows that the Rangers' true weakness right now. I mean, last season it was the 2C with Ryan Strome. But right now I'd say it's got to be the first line right wing with Jimmy VC. So I guess we'll see what they end up doing there. Maybe we'll discuss that in the next episode of Fireside Rangers to so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. But I think that there does need to be a conversation to be had about that first line right wing and see if there's any way that we could get some more talent up there. Yeah, Jimmy VC definitely does not need to be up there for the rest of the season. Right. So 
I guess that pretty much wraps up this, this discussion on Alexi Lafreniere, his performance so far this season, and what we want to see out of him going forward. Make sure to comment down below your thoughts on the topic. Leave a like if you enjoyed this episode, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one, and let's go let's Rangers. Go Rangers. Back. He shoots. He's